1974, it was a big year for the city of Twin Falls. That was the year Evil Knievel came to town to try to jump the Snake River Canyon. He failed. It was also a big year for concerts in the Magic Valley town, one of which also a failure. Although that one didn't end up in a less than dramatic descent and into abyss, but it did end up in a courtroom. On this day in 1974, Idaho's Attorney General filed complaints against the concert promoters that brought Fleetwood Mac to play a concert at the College of Southern Idaho. Yeah, that Fleetwood Mac, but no, not that Fleetwood Mac. Okay, the compressed Cliff Notes version of the history of Fleetwood Mac goes like this. They formed in 1967, they lost, then added members. There was some sketchy intermingling of partners, which led to a falling out, and by 1973, the band told their manager they needed a break. That manager, Clifford Davis, was bent on bringing the band on a U.S. tour. So Davis formed another Fleetwood Mac with the likes of Elmer Gantry as lead singer, a guy named Kirby on guitar, and another not named Mick Fleetwood on drums. Their tour started in January in Pittsburgh and made a stop in Twin Falls on February 6th, a concert in the gym, highlighting the week's schedule at the College of Southern Idaho that week, along with a professional pool exhibition. But fans of the band didn't see it as a highlight at all. I was a fan and it was in 1974 when I heard Bear Trees. Deborah Silver wasn't there, but she wanted to be living just across the river in Jerome. I didn't go, no, because I had to work or something and it was expensive. Deborah does remember the fallout though. So you didn't go, but your boyfriend went and what did he tell you he saw when he went? As I recall, he was unimpressed. And the rumors were starting by that summer. Somehow people were talking about it, that there was maybe a fake band. And as it turns out, that's true. <laughs> Which is why following the next night show at the fairgrounds in Boise, where about 3000 fans paid about five bucks a head to get in, the AG's office got wind of it. And they filed a lawsuit the following week on February 17th, asking for a refund for advertising the publicly popular entertainment group Fleetwood Mac, but showing up with a group of unknown, unidentified musicians posing as Fleetwood Mac. Are you glad you didn't pay money and go? Oh my gosh. Yeah, because to me, that was a lot of money. I would have been very upset <laughs> if I'd gone and then it wasn't, it wasn't actually them. The tour shut down shortly after. So how did that lawsuit play out? Well, we're still not quite sure, but according to the website, pleasekillme.com, who wrote an extensive history on this fake Fleetwood and the tour, other fans in other states never got their refunds. The real members of Fleetwood Mac did sue their former manager, Clifford Davis, over the ownership of the name. A UK court granted them an injunction later that year, but it took another two and a half years to settle all the legal issues between Davis and the band. Shortly after that, Mick Fleetwood heard a recording of Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham, and well, you know what happened after that. And Deborah says she finally did see Fleetwood Mac in concert in Salt Lake City in 1976.